This afternoon, we are starting off with the section Shine with our Shiny. Uh, three talks related to using Shiny. Uh, our first talk is by Erica Bishop. Let's give her a round of applause. And then, yeah, okay, take it away. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm excited to talk to you all today about how to improve your R Shiny development workflows by making a template. Um, really excited to be here. I feel like the bar has been set very high from some of those previous talks. So hopefully I can bring the after lunch energy. Um, so first, a little bit of background about me. Oh, do I know how to click a slide? I do. Uh, a little bit of background about me and what I do. I'm an environmental data scientist with GSI Environmental. Um, and prior to starting with them, I've been with them for about a year, I was finishing a master's program at UC Santa Barbara. And that's where I started my R coding journey. So I've only been coding in R for a few years, but I've learned a lot. And hopefully some of what I've learned can be helpful for you all. So with GSI Environmental, we're a consulting company and we do a really wide range of projects. We do a lot of monitoring and remediation. We do risk assessments. We do litigation support. Anytime there's like something going wrong in the environment, we're there to figure out what's going wrong and how we can fix it and what the risk is. So um, we also operate with a fairly lean data science team. There's only a handful of us at the company who are dedicated coders. And we're responsible for bringing some of the data science tools and more advanced data practices to the rest of the company who are scientists and engineers who are using more Excel-based workflows or other modeling tools that are, that are non-coding based. And then we also often operate with really quick turnaround times we would love to have, but often don't have the luxury to do lengthy exploratory analysis and then plan our more in-depth analysis and then develop an app and then output our final reports and figures. We're often putting together an agency report or a report for the client as the same, at the same time that we're working on our exploratory analysis. So the only way that this is possible is through a lot of collaboration, which is why uh, we use our Shiny. I don't think I need to make the case for our Shiny being an excellent tool in a room full of our enthusiasts, um, but we love it because we already have the in-house expertise to develop our Shiny apps, being a little team of our coders. And it also helps us handle really complex environmental data. Our projects will have spatial data that's both laterally spatial and depth data. We might have imagery data. We'll have toxicology data. We might have data that spans, spans back decades. Um, we might have model results. We need to take all of this information, lab data, field data, all the ways that we translate the complexities of the real world environment into numbers and then translate those numbers back into what's actually happening in the environment. So our Shiny is our tool of choice for doing this and we use it as both an internal communication tool and an external commu communication tool to show our clients and regulators what's going on at these sites. So that brings me to why we built a template. Our Shiny is amazing and wonderful, but one of its downfalls, at, at least for many of us, is that it can take a while to build a really great R Shiny app. There's a lot of work that goes into it. So a template cuts down on this work. It takes the code that we've put into other apps, packages up into one basically stencil that, that we can then pull down and use to hit the ground running. So, we also use this tool, uh, a templated R Shiny app, instead of maybe a more advanced or, or other interactive data visualization platform um, because it kind of balances that need for project-specific customization that we're always going to have with kind of an out-of-the-box ready tool. We, we definitely need that balance. We can't just have the same exact thing, but we need a, a starting place to save time. And then R Shiny is also, a, a template is also easily maintainable by a fairly small team. Um, so we don't really have the overhead to work with uh, to learn, learn a new tool or develop an entire, entire new practice. So that makes it easy for us. And that also makes it easy as we're growing and hiring new R coders um, to, to use our process and learn how we develop apps without any extra training. They can use our template and hit the ground running. Um, and all of this means that we're just minimizing the overhead time and focusing more on our project specific analysis. So let's go ahead and uh, 
Let's talk about what actually goes into the template. With the environmental data that we work with, there's a few things that we found ourselves putting into every single app that we develop. So the first is being filtering. Uh, everyone who works at GSI goes right in and they want to filter by a specific location, by a specific date or depth or whatever it may be. Um, and then we also need interactive site maps, which I've been building in Leaflet, but after seeing Justin's talk, I think I need to kill Leaflet and go just to ggplot for all my maps. <laughs> um, but our geologists especially love to just use the maps to filter. They want to zoom in on the, the groundwater wells and click on them to see the data there. So we do that for them. And then also time series plotting and trend analysis. That is kind of the bread and butter of groundwater monitoring. <laughs> um, and then also just statistical summary tables. These are all of the pieces that we repeat over and over in all of our apps. So these are the main elements of our template. So what that actually looks like, um, this is a quick demo of the template that I pulled down and use it to use our map, select a couple wells. It's going to run a man Kendall trend analysis. Uh, you can take a look at the plot and download those results. And if you don't believe me on the time saving, this only took me 45 minutes to make from just pulling down our repo and building this app. So all of our theming is in there. We use the BSLib theming, um, so we don't have to worry about that app to that, but that app to app, it's already right there. Uh -huh. So how do we actually build this? There's three main elements that go into our template. It's modularity, the app framework, and a central code base to house it all. So modularity is the most important prerequisite for building a template. Um, I am just kind of curious, a little corny, but if you wouldn't mind giving me a show of hands who's built an app that uses a modular framework before. Okay, cool, a few of you, yeah. Um, if you haven't, don't worry. It's, uh, it is a learning curve, but it's well worth it. I, I'm not gonna go into the specifics of how to modularize in this talk, um, but it's something, there's a ton of great resources. I think we've already seen some mentioned today. But the main takeaway that you need to know about modularity is that instead of having your UI and your server all together for all of the components of your Shiny app, each piece of your app is its own function. So the map is its own function, the data filtering is its own function, the data table is its own function, and then the calculation that runs that trend analysis is yet another separate function. So each of these pieces circled here is a module, and that gets written in its own script with a module UI function and a module server function. And then you can call those functions that you've written to create these pieces into one main R script. So that just makes it a lot easier to take these individual pieces that are all entirely self-contained and pop them around wherever you want. So I do apologize for more code dumping on the screen today, but um, this is what a module script looks like. So this is an example from that time series module, and it's just one script. The top part there is where you're doing your library import with the Rhino framework style, which I'll, I'll touch on in a moment. But then that middle section, that is where you're building your UI just for that time series plot, and that's its own self-contained function. And then below that, that is all the server code for your plot. Um, I've taken out some of the Plotly code. Obviously, there's a lot more than just one line to make a plot. Um, but that, again, one self-contained function. And then you will take these elements in your main R script and call them in with that dollar sign syntax. So we use mod underscore to name all of our modules. And then in the main R script, we can call mod underscore plot dollar sign UI and that's going to give us the UI piece for our, mod, uh, for our plot. And similarly, mod underscore plot dollar sign server or module server to pull in the server side. And we can put those pieces, for example, if we wanted to move this, uh, this, oops, sorry, this uh, mod plot UI piece, we could just copy and paste that line and pop it somewhere else in our UI code and that would move the time series around. So, the modules are the most important aspect because that's what lets us take these pieces and copy and paste them, move them across apps, and they're not dependent on one long script. They're individual functions. So 
So the next piece of building an effective Shiny template is using a good framework. Um, there's a lot of Shiny frameworks out there, like Gollum and Leprechaun and others that I probably haven't heard of. Um, but at GSI, we really like the Rhino framework from Appsilon for a few main reasons. Um, it's built for apps that are meant to scale up. So even if you're starting with a small app and it keeps growing and growing and growing, this framework is gonna help you do that effectively. It's really built with more of a software development perspective um, than, rather than a scientific scripting perspective. And it inherently uses that modular structure. So the Rhino framework gives you a file structure and a dependency structures that's meant to house all of your different individual modules. Um, we also like using this framework because it gives us consistency across every app. Every app that we build with our template that uses the Rhino framework is going to have the same file structure, things are gonna be named the same, things are all working the same. So it makes it easier to collaborate and work on multiple apps at once. And then lastly, the Rhino package also does version control for you. It uses RENV under the hood, so you don't have to worry about doing your version control separately. It's all wrapped up into this one framework. And so the last piece of what goes into the template is where we're housing it. Um, it is just housed as a template repository on GitHub, um, which is a feature I didn't know about before creating this RShiny template. But it's just a GitHub repo that dumps all of our module code and the, the whole Rhino framework structure into a repo on GitHub that you can then choose to use template. There's just a use template button there. Or anytime you're creating a new repo, there's a dropdown and you can say, use the Shiny app template. So this makes it really easy for anyone on our team to use it and also for anyone on our team to contribute to it. So they can just open a new pull request if they've created a cool new uh, plot or something for another app, they can add that to our template repo. Um, and along that note, it also serves as our centralized data visualization and Shiny app code base for the team. We are a fairly small team, so just kind of having this code base reference anytime we want to look at how we did some analysis or how we created some plot, this has just been a really useful resource for that reason. So those are the main ingredients for the template. It's the modularity, it's the framework, and it's storing it all on GitHub. I wanna talk a little more too about how this works in our workflow. So this is our, our old workflow that we are currently moving away from. And the template has saved us a ton of time on this last step here of data visualization, populating the app template, that's really fast. Like I said, it took me 45 minutes to spit up a little demo. Um, but what takes us the most time still is that data wrangling piece because each of our different projects will have a different database stored in a different way depending on who created it and what the legacy of the project is. Um, and so this non-standard piece is the most time intensive. So what we're working on across the whole company is project by project transitioning into a standard Postgres database with a standard database format. And what's the, this has a million benefits that honestly warrants its own talk, but the main takeaway for the Shiny app piece is that we can then template that data wrangling piece too. If the database is standard, we can use the same data wrangling steps, and that's going to streamline that process even further. So Lastly, I just wanna wrap up with a couple of thoughts on the small things that have actually made a really big difference for me in using this framework. Um, the clean coding practices really matter uh, when you're used to working on your own, not really collaborating and just trying to get an analysis out quickly, more focused on the stats than the reproducibility. Some of this goes to the wayside, but I, I think it's worth mentioning because especially once you start working with other coders, just using a, a standard reactive naming convention, we flag everything with RV underscore, makes troubleshooting a million times easier. My favorite reactive troubleshooting technique is to use that control shift F, and then you can search across your entire project for all of the reactives and pull them up right there. Um, and that's just one of those little things that ends up making a big difference. And then lastly, with that Rhino structure too, just having a consistent 
file structure, it, it sounds dull, but it just makes it a million times easier to pick up a colleague's code, troubleshoot it, pick up where they left off, and pass things around to one another. So the bottom line that I'll leave you with now is that a template is a really lightweight tool that's gonna have big time savings in the end, um, and it's going to improve your collaboration on our shiny app development. Thanks so much.